evening. Graham Rawlins with our Friday edition of News Geelong. The Surf Coast Shire draft 2012-13 budget has been able to strike a balance retaining service levels and delivering important capital works. While the Theatre of the Wing Uniform, in association with Series Art Theatre, is presenting the Agatha Christie thriller Murder on the Nile, being directed by Ben Mitchell. From the world of Geelong Sport, Mitch Scoop Cleary updates us with the latest, while from the weather world, we'll bring in the Geelong and Surf Coast area weather forecast expected over the next six days. The Surf Coast Shire proposed budget for 2012-13 has been released for public comment and provides boosts to community infrastructure throughout the Shire. Ian Nichols reports. Well, News Geelong has got us down to the Surf Coast again. We're looking at council rates throughout the region, as you would know. And uh, this one is no exception. We're talking with the Mayor of the Surf Coast Shire, Councillor Brian McKitterick. Some relief for ratepayers, a 4.9% increase, the lowest in several years. Exactly right. Since uh, 2003, that's been the lowest. And look, the council's really pleased to be able to, to uh, have that rate rise, which is... Um, significantly less than uh, previous years. Um, we've um, financially sound at this time and um, despite that low rate rise we're still being able to uh, give over nine, $19 million worth of uh, capital works this coming year. Yes, just glancing through that, uh, Brian, it's far reaching, isn't it, from lawn right through to uh, the other side of Torquay? That's right. We're um, looking across the whole shire to ensure that um, we, we share the capital works throughout the Shire and um, lawn, lawn visitor centres are having a, a, an increase of some drainage there as well. Dean's Marsh is obtaining some, some um, funding for footpaths, looking at Winchelsea um, increasing uh, infrastructure in, infra sorry, in Winchelsea uh, and Torquay, the, the second stage of this fantastic sports pavilions and uh, precinct. So we're looking at uh, sharing, sharing the infrastructure across the Shire. Throughout the state there's a, a revaluation of, um, of properties. Um, undertaken, that goes through the Auditor General to ensure that um, everything's um, above board um, and the impact on that we can't determine at this stage. Well you indicated that in some cases people might even pay less rates. That's exactly right, um, depending on the value of your home and some homes have um, devalued in certain areas that um, you may actually have a reduction in, in some of your rates so that's a uh, it's an unknown quantity at this stage. The search for a new chief executive officer, is that going well? Yes, that's going well. Um, uh, a recruitment firm has, has been um, engaged by the Shire and uh, we're looking to advertise very shortly and we're looking to get um, the best possible candidate throughout Australia, so it'll be interesting and very exciting times. At the Surf Coast Shire, this is Ian Nichols for News Geelong. Thank you, Ian. National Volunteers Week is an annual event across our great nation to highlight the enormity of the role volunteers across all sections of our communities play on a daily basis. Meryl Friend has more. May the 14th to the 20th was National Volunteer Week and as part of that 6 million people Australia wide offer up their services free of charge. We were able to speak with people from Diversitat, the coordinator Anita Barras and also one of the volunteers Michael Burns. My role here is to um, recruit and train volunteers um, specifically for the purposes of working with refugees here in the Geelong community. And it is volunteer week, so you've got lots of programs running. One of them's the homework group. That's right. Uh, we run a homework club here um, out of North Geelong Secondary College. And we run that in conjunction with the Centre for Multicultural Youth who fund the program. Um, that program runs on Tuesdays and Thursdays um, every week um, from 3.30 to 4.30. And it provides um, refugee students with the assistance of tutoring for their homework um, via volunteer tutors. So that group of people volunteering are a very diverse group? Yes, they are. The volunteers come from all walks of life. Um, more often than, the, than not, they contact me um, in terms of wanting to become involved with um, refugee communities and working with tutoring children. Um, they can be students. Um, we have a number of students from Deakin University, be it medical students or law students, all the way through to um, people who are employed, semi-retired or retired, um, mostly of professional um, background. Oh, I've been in, uh, I guess, uh, community work for some time and then uh, I think I went to some session that Anita was running at one time and, and it became aware that uh, this sort of work was going. 
uh, I was looking for what options there was to work with the refugees, and uh, this this was the particular one that suited my uh, tyre, what I had on at the time. So yeah, I started that about 12 months ago. And what is it that you're getting out of this for yourself? For myself, oh, it's it's an understanding really of, of the of the new immigrants and the uh, refugees, and appreciating the situation they've been through. You don't only through their actual, you don't learn of the their personal experiences in the club. But what you do is you you appreciate their the striving they've got to be where they're at, and and how deeply they want to improve themselves. It's it's so evident when you when you're working with them. And what sort of things are you able to help them with? Oh, most of the time I'm called on, because my background's engineering, uh, I'm called mainly working with the mathematics and then uh, some science and uh, other than that it's uh, English. It's sort of, you just, or social, social studies, those sorts of things, yeah. From the Northern Hub of Diversitat, Meryl Friend, News Geelong. Thank you, Meryl. It all began 125 years ago. The establishment of the now finest and diversified education facility at Geelong's own The Gordon. Ian Nichols records some of the fine history. This is The Gordon today, 125 years on, celebrating a history of leading and learning here in Geelong. And there's an extraordinary exhibition that you can see right now until the end of the month, based on this book by Richard Everest. It's a really good read and tells you just what has happened over that 125 year journey. We're talking with the exhibition coordinator, Liz Grant. 1897, uh, the Gordon was established. The foundation stone for the Gordon's first building was actually laid, which is the Davidson restaurant. And the Davidson still actually exists and is now, um, it was a lecture hall back then and uh, is now a restaurant. Well, we're all familiar with that, of course, but it has been a seat of learning for 125 years, leading the way. And this exhibition, you've got some photographs that have obviously been blown up and give great detail of the years from right back from day one to the modern era. Yes, we were actually um, really blessed with a lot of the photos that were in the archives. I think the actual book um, that the exhibition is based on or, or pulls a lot of information from, I think they, they looked at around 3,000 images to distill into what has actually uh, come into the book. And then this exhibition has around, uh, around 75 to 80 images that were blown up specifically for the exhibition. But it's extraordinary the amount of detail that you can now see that you miss when it's in a book that when you actually look at the uh, blowing up photographs or blowing up images there's a huge amount of detail in people's faces and in what they're doing and in their what, what they're wearing that really displays uh, what was happening at the time. It does. You can see it in their faces and you can see it in the background. It's just extraordinary. And we should talk about Richard Everest's book. Of course, uh, this is also a wonderful publication. Oh, it's a beautiful publication. It's a very, very good read as well. And rather than follow, um, I think, uh, a traditional historical um, way of writing, what it actually does is it puts everything in context. So it, it actually goes through eight chronological chapters, but uh, starts with the world, Australia, Victoria and also the history of Geelong and then puts uh, the Gordon in context of what was happening at the time, uh, you know, in that broader context. The other fabulous thing about the book is that there, there are uh, lots and lots of images. Every single opening has several images that really shows you what was happening at the time and represents what was happening at the time. So if you love great images, if you love great stories, or if you really like to understand the history of the region, it's a beautiful book. At the Gordon, celebrating 125 years, this is Ian Nichols for News Geelong. Thank you, Ian. As we go to a break on this Friday edition of News Geelong, don't forget you can Twitter us on our Twitter account at News Geelong 31 with your thoughts and comments and keep our Twitter master Mitch Cleary busy. We'll return with more news after this.